The horror show at Extreme Rules just went off the air. And I got to say, man, well, for, for a pay-per-view, this was actually a pretty good pay-per-view. Um, from start to finish, um, all around just a really good show. Um, but just because it was a good show, there were some flaws, mainly particular the I-49 match, which obviously I'm not surprised. And I'll get to that when I get to that. But before we get to that match, I got to talk about the two matches that took place before that match. Anyway, so we kicked off the night with Cesaro and Sheamus. Uh, oh, good God, not Cesaro and Sheamus. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura taking on the New Day in a tables match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And I got to say, you know, for a tables tag team match, this was a really good match. This was a pretty good, decent match. Um, really good way to, to open up um, Extreme Rules. Um, the ending was absolutely amazing. Um, just having Cesaro um, put Kofi through the table and having Kofi just lay there dead. It's it's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, you got you got to give it to Kofi, man. Like, you got to give it to Kofi for that spot, you know, for selling the way he did. Um, but, yeah. But just like I predicted um, on Friday, um, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura win the tag team championships. And I got to, which is good because you know what, man. Love the new day, but... I mean, what else were they going to do with the titles? You might as well put it on a new team. And, you know, since you're not really doing nothing with Cesaro and Sheamus, might as well give them the tag team titles. You know what I mean? So, pretty good tag team match player. The next match was another championship match, and it was for the SmackDown Women's Championship between Bayley and Nikki Cross and... You know, I said in my predictions that maybe, just maybe, Alexa Bliss might turn heel. And even if she didn't, then I, I would have been okay with it. She didn't turn heel, no. But her and um, Sasha, um, they were on the apron. Um, you know, Bailey hit, you know, um, Nikki Cross with the boss. Like boss knuckles, you know, things that um Sasha Banks have on her hand. And Bailey won using heel tactics because she's a heel, which lots of heels should be doing these days, using heel tactics to win a match. The old school way. But I gotta say, um This is a pretty good decent match, you know, it wasn't the best match. I gotta you know, if I had to pick which one was better between Sasha and Asuka and the uh, in this match between Bailey and Nikki Cross, I would say Sasha versus Asuka. But it was a pretty good, decent match. You know, Nikki showing once again why she is decent and that she can go in the ring. Like, if you give her a chance, if you give her the moment to shine, then she will not crack under pressure. She will take that moment and she will let it shine. <laughs> Disney movie. <laughs> let it shine, Disney. Uh, like 2012-ish. You know, but anyways, um, decent match and having Bailey win, you know, yeah. So we get to the match where I am not so really okay with Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio in an I versus nine match. Now I got to say overall the match was amazing. Well, it wasn't amazing. It was good. It was good. It was good. It, it was good. You know what I mean? Like, like, Ray got some offense. Seth got some offense. The problem, and it might seem like a nitpick, you know, but I, I don't really care. Um, the problem that I have with this match was that was morally the ending. Um, so, Seth obviously, you know, does what he did to Ray. Um Steel steps, you know, eye and everything. And, um, you know, it's just that, man, just the way Seth and them reacted, it was just like, oh, my goodness. You know, 
And my thing, what made me cringe was Seth puking. Like, dude, you're you're puking. <laughs> like, I, I understand, you know, the eyeball came out, but dude, like, oh god, that, that was weird. You know, I'm like, you know, and if I was Seth, you know, me being the heel, I would have been laughing and been and like, you know, like happy that um, I, I poked Seth because I'm a heel. I, I mean, Rey Mysterio's eye out because I'm I'm a heel. You know, I'm a bad guy. You know. I'm supposed to do evil, ungodly things to the good guy. So, um, obviously, some people were saying, I did say in my predictions that I did want Ray to win. I thought Ray was going to win. And um, having Seth win obviously makes sense. Um, there are rumors. Um, obviously, if everyone's been hearing at this point, Ray has been wrestling without a contract like Ray is wrestling but he is not under contract and I said that the only way I see Ray not leaving WWE is with his son Dominic um with his son Dominic you know being in the ring with him I that's the only way I see Ray Mysterio um being in the WWE continuing to stay in the WWE now I'm hearing that Ray could be on his way out, and this was a way to write him off. Now I don't know what's gonna happen, you know. I'm because I'm not I'm not Ray Mysterio, so I don't I don't know. Maybe Ray will still stay in WWE, you know. And if he does, then you know he does. But if this is the if this is the last time that we see Ray Mysterio in the WWE, then I gotta say, man, you know. Ray, we I love you and I'm I'm gonna support you wherever you go. If that if that's New Japan, um, AEW, Ring of Honor, whatever, Ray, you will and you will always be a legend. And you will most definitely be a future Hall of Famer, being in the WWE Hall of Fame one day. Um but yeah, man, it's just that what the, the um the ending was weird. Um, you know, I understand like you know, it was a nine versus nine match, but I can see why some people were like cringe by it, you know. But it is what it is. At the end of the day it is what it is. So Seth Rollins wins. Overall, good average match. So the next match, well, we can't really call this a match because it was supposed to be a United States championship match between MVP and Apollo Cruz. And it's weird because I was gonna say this in the predictions, but but I forgot about it. And we have not seen Apollo since he was on MVP's lounge, like back in like what was it, like the near the end of June. You know, it was just weird because like we were all like, yo, you know, where where's Apollo at? You know, I'm you know where's Apollo at? And so Apollo, apparently, the match was forfeit. MVP won the match by forfeit because I don't, they said something about Apollo like failing a physical or something like that. And now I'm hearing that Apollo could possibly, I'm not saying has, could possibly is in quarantine and has, you know, the C word, which is the COVID nineteen. I'm not saying he does. I'm not saying he has. It. I'm just saying that he could have it, or he just could not. Like he's not at the shows because he's wants to quarantine because he, you know, he's he's just sick and tired or like coming over and having to, you know, dealing with the fear of contracting the virus. You know what's weird? WWE. Does not mention the coronavirus at all. But AEW does. You know what I mean? Like AEW literally, you know, said that oh, you know, Moxie wasn't able to be here for you know for Fighter Fest because of because of the coronavirus. So um I don't know why the W's not mentioned. Maybe it's because like they don't want fans to think about it, which is weird because that's literally the thing that's hap the, the biggest thing that's happening in the world right now. Like, oh, they, they, they don't need to know about this. Dude, everyone in the world knows about this. 
everything. Everyone. You know, like, might as well mention it, you know. Might as well be real about it instead of, you know, being fake. And that's the same thing they did with Reigns. Like, I understand, you know, why Reigns pulled out, but, like, they never acknowledged the fact why he pulled out. They just announced that Goldberg was going to, you know, face Strowman at WrestleMania for the Universal title. And they just, after that, really, they just completely name-dropped Roman out of the picture. Anyways, the next match is for the SmackDown. Oh, God, no, not SmackDown. The Raw Women's Championship as Asuka defended her title against Sasha. This this uh, match, like I said, was pretty good, which I expected. Um, Asuka and Sasha had that amazing match on Raw um, about maybe one, two years ago. Or three years ago. And it was good. It was really good. And um, with this match, it it was good. It was average good. It made, you know, good. Good Raw Women's Championship match. But the finish, to me, was confusing. And it was just weird. It, it was so weird. Um, so, so Asuka, you know, with the green miss, spits the green miss in the referee. You know, Sasha and Bailey get Asuka and um, Bailey, you know, puts the referee shirt on. Like she takes the ref shirt off and puts the referee shirt on her for herself. And Bailey makes the pinfall, the count, and Sasha is Raw Women's Champion. And, you know, if they if they literally announce tomorrow night on Raw that, you know, Sasha is, like, officially the champ, I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, well, that's just crazy. But I feel like that tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw, they're going to announce that it was illegal for Bayley to do that and Asuka being the champion, you know? You know what I mean? So I, I feel like that's what's going to happen tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. So then we get to the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler picks the stipulation. And it's weird because it's it, it's like the WWE was listening to me. You know what I mean? It was like the WWE like heard saw my video while no one else did WWE saw my video you know I'm not saying they did but but you guys get the point I said in the video that this is I understand this is the horror show but this is still extreme rules and there's not one extreme rules match not one tonight Dolph Ziggler said that this match will be extreme rules but it can only be used for him. And if Drew uses the weapon, he gets DQ'd. If Drew gets counted out, he Dolph wins the title. If Drew disqualifies himself, you, you get it. Dolph wins the title. Even though Dolph lost the match, even though obviously Dolph's obviously going back to being where he was, this was a really great WWE championship match. What else can I say? It was just great. Drew, like I said, most likely go on and make seat face Randy Orton. Who knows? And as for Dolph Ziggler, he's just going to go back to being a jobber. You know what I mean? Well, not really a jobber, but like. He'll just go back to being same old, like, um, as my uncle would say, you know, back to his old ways. You know what I mean? So, um, Dolph Ziggler will most likely, most definitely be going back to his old ways again. This was just a filler feud so Drew can get to the bigger thing at hand. Most likely, Randy Orton, SummerSlam. Now we get to the main event. The main event of the night. 
to end this night off even crazier, we see the swamp fight between Bray Wyatt, cult leader Bray Wyatt, I should say, and Braun Strowman. Now, now, if, you know, some fans are going to be like, whoa, this is boring because there's no wrestling. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, my goodness. This is, this is crap. Once again, WWE putting on an amazing cinematic match, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, you can really tell by the way that this match was being booked, you can tell that this had Bray Wyatt because, you know, they did say that Bray Wyatt had lots of innings on the match. You can tell that this was Bray Wyatt stuff. I loved it. I loved the match. Jesus, what the hell's that beeping sound? Sorry, everyone. Um, um, to make this short, 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 um, <laughs> A few days ago, the um, the air conditioner broke, and um, upstairs, I'm recording this video upstairs, and um, it was like hell up here, like Jesus Christ, man, like every time me and my sister came up here, it was hot as hell, I, I couldn't even fucking hardly breathe in here, I was damn near sweating up here, like I could, I'm moving around, you know, with my Fitbit, my Fitbit, yes, I did get a Fitbit, and Fucking getting all sweaty and crazy. It was hot. It was like hell up here. It was torture. Jesus. But anyways, so obviously um, the people came um, on Thursday and they fixed the, um, you know, thing. And now the air conditioner is back to normal, which is why I'm up here now. Um, but... Um, like the first day, it was like a beeping noise, and now obviously, if you heard, um, there was a beeping noise. So just wanted to let you guys know what the what the, what the H E double hockey sticks was going on there. But back to our original programming. This swamp fight was um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, like I said, it was amazing. Um, Alexa Bliss, man, she did a really good job. Um, nice callback to the mix match challenge match, you know, you know, with the whole uh, um, Little Miss Bliss and um, well, Team Little Big, I should say, um, you know, with the whole thing with Alexa being on top of of um, you know Strowman. And I don't, I don't want to get too much there, you know. Oh, you know, kids might be watching this. I got to keep it PG, but. Don't get all red at all like your boy Xavier Woods. <laughs> oh my. Um That was funny as hell. I know I know that was uh like three years ago, but dude, when I go back and watch that video where the Usos, where they were like, hey, let's just keep it PG, you know, and don't get all red at all like your boy Xavier Woods, I was just like, oh my goodness. And then to make it funny, Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack was like, obviously name dropping the you know what video, but he didn't say it. He didn't like say it, you know. Oh, that was funny as hell. Anyways, once again, for real this time, back to our original programming. The Swamp Fight um, was really amazing. Um, obviously, the ending, which what they kind of said it would be. Something out of a horror movie. Um, what I really like is how they had the, um, the, you know, the, it was like the show was coming to an end while Strowman was saying it's over. You know, it's kind of like what, what NXT does. Um, most notably, um, when Tommaso Ciampa turned on um, Johnny Gargano and NXT TakeOver Chicago 2017. Haha, <laughs> another year, 2017. Jesus. I've been using 2017 a lot, this live stream. Well, not this live stream, but this video. Um, yeah, man. Um, you know, the you know um, DIY, they were standing um, on the stage. And, you know, everyone was saying DIY. And when they thought that the paper was about to go on the air, boom, Champa 
you know, does his thing on Gargano. So, and that big old feud starts. But anyways, man, um, The Fiend coming out, which is amazing. So, obviously, The Fiend and Showman will most likely face each other at SummerSlam, which will be the payoff for this match. Um, you know, obviously, um, they've, I know some will be like, oh, this is bad, but I love how during this whole thing that they've been, you know, like doing the whole, um, Strowman, you know, the, the phases of, of, uh, Bray Wyatt. So I gotta say once again, man, Extreme Rules are really a ama- pretty good event. And, um, I'm very intrigued to see what they're going to do for SummerSlam. Um, Monday Night Raw tomorrow night, obviously the Randy Orton versus the Big Show in an unsanctioned match, you know. Um, yeah. So, anyways, this is DC Wrestling, even though that's not actually my real name. But, um, yeah. Hope you guys have a um, good rest of your night.